A quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Why, even when we have what we want, are we still bummed or just plain unhappy? Economist Nat Ware thinks this common predicament is caused by expectation gaps. Today, he presents what we can do to keep ourselves in good spirits. I became fascinated in this notion, this idea of happiness. I'm interested in it from an economics perspective, and I'm interested in it from a social enterprise perspective, because happiness is, after all, the ultimate social outcome. I want to begin with a little quiz, a little game. Uh, it's just a simple multiple choice quiz. So the first question, imagine that you're competing in the Olympic Games, imagine that you're representing your country. What would you prefer out of the following? Would you prefer to come second, to come third? Question number two. Imagine that you're given one of two options. Either you win the lottery and you get $10 million tomorrow, you can spend it however you want. Or option B, alternatively, you get a very small payment tomorrow, but you get gradual payments throughout your lifetime, increasing payments. And in total, you get $8 million over the course of your lifetime. If I gave you that option right now, what would you pick? Third and final question. You get to choose your salary. What'd you pick? You get $50,000 and everyone else you know gets $50,000. You get $50,000 and everyone else gets sixty, dollars Or you get $40,000 and everyone else you know gets thirty. dollars Let's look at what the research says about what actually makes us content, what actually makes us satisfied, what actually makes us happy. For question one, the answer is actually to come a third. There's no shortage of silver medalists who appear unhappy. The macro data actually supports this as well. We have technology improving exponentially, but we don't see a corresponding increase in our life satisfaction, in our happiness. That's perhaps one of the great paradoxes of our time. And I think it's because we don't really understand why it is that we're often unhappy. And so the obvious question is, why is it that we're unhappy? What's the explanation? Now, it's not an easy question to answer, but it's one that I've thought about I think there's one explanation that I find far more compelling, far more plausible, far more persuasive than any other. At a very basic, simple level, we're unhappy when our expectations of reality exceed our experiences of reality, when our expectations exceed reality. And I like to call this an expectation gap, when our expectations are greater than reality. It's a very simple concept but it's a hugely important concept to fully understand, to fully get our head around. And to help us get our head around it, I like to think in terms of three different types of expectation gaps. Three different types of gaps based on the different ways in which we form expectations. I think we form expectations based on our imagination, based on those around us, and based on our past experiences. So to this first type of expectation gap, the imagination gap, which occurs when our imagination exceeds reality. Because what it means is that we, when we then see reality, when we then experience it, whether it's the good or the place we travel to or the leader that we elect, it's highly likely that that reality won't live up to our expectation. And that leads to disappointment. The second main type of expectation that we have, I like to call the interpersonal gap. It's where we compare our reality to the reality of others. Put simply, we judge ourselves based on what we experience around us. If you get a small pay rise, but everyone around you gets a large pay rise, you'll be disappointed. Your gain is someone's pain. Someone's pain is your gain. The third and final way is based on our past, based on our past experiences. I call this the intertemporal gap. And we're unhappy when our past reality is better than our present reality. Why is this? We compare to our past, and if you're constantly improving, constantly exceeding expectations, constantly moving forward, you're generally happy. So what we see is that our happiness is largely determined by expectations. Our expectations are largely determined by what we consider to be normal. And what we consider to be normal is largely based on our imagination, based on others around us, and based on our past. And so we have these constant battles, the battle between our imagination and our reality, the battle between the reality that we experience and what we think or perceive that others experience, the battle between our reality and our past reality. How can we win these battles? 
Well, I think the first challenge, the challenge for entrepreneurs and businessmen, for parents, for legislators, for magazine editors, is to take happiness seriously, to take expectations seriously. I think often we relegate happiness to the world of art, not science. We dismiss it. We think of it in terms of hippies rather than businessmen. What we want is for entrepreneurs to focus on actually improving contentment, not just increasing consumption. In terms of winning the imagination battle, I think it's important that we make it known to content providers the importance of actually having realistic representations of images, people, and places and events. In terms of winning the interpersonal battle, I think it's important that governments prioritize income equality and that we learn to compete against ourselves rather than against others. We seem to have been seduced into a way of life that almost conspires in every way against the most basic level of contentment. We're terrible predictors of what will make us happy, but the way in which we feel is based on relative outcomes, based on expectations. It's expectations that explains why a bronze medalist can be happier than a silver medalist, because the silver medalist imagines coming first, the bronze medalist imagines coming forth. It's expectations. We often think of happiness in isolation, in a vacuum, when in reality our happiness is far more complicated. It's far more intertwined with our community, our imagination, and our past. And it's important that we think carefully about how our minds work, how our feelings work, how our expectations work. And it's important that we change the way in which we make decisions so that our thinking process matches our feeling process. Ladies and gentlemen, for entrepreneurs that want to improve the lives of others, as well as for people that want to be happy, I think the first step is understanding why we're unhappy. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded in Klagenfurt, Austria. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Klagenfurt. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.